Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. You know what? I'm so sorry. You always shop when I have the bottle open. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm pouring myself a beautiful bottle of rosé. And um, here you are. I love it. <laughs> and here you are. I'm so sorry it took me so long. No, don't be sorry. Here. What? Don't be sorry. Here. Otherwise, it looks ugly on the other side. Okay. Can you see me, though? Yeah? You're so cute. I can see you just fine. Okay. Good, good, can good. You... Yeah, good. How are you doing? Um, I'm great. Thank you for <laughs> joining me tonight. I was, I, got, I was so, like, ahead of schedule, and I just started getting on to My Recipes account, and I realized it had been removed from my phone, so then I was... Uh, couldn't find the password again. But listen, life, life, it is what it is. You know, it's just like this. You just keep going. You're like, all right, let's see how this works out. You know, listen, if there is, you know, if there is a silver lining in all of these things that were going on, you know, in, in, well, in the world, you know, with COVID, staying home, it's the acceptance of imperfection. Also in the kitchen, right? Like, yes, yes. And right? learning to adapt. And learning to adapt. I love that. So you kind of go with the flow. I mean, I wanted the red. I don't have any red wine. I adapted to a beautiful rosé. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> what right. is your drink? <laughs> okay, I'm about to drink. Hold on. I was, okay. I was Can starting we do to pour. I was starting to pour myself some tequila because I was getting stressed out. But um, <laughs> I just have like a decent um, Chardonnay. Oh my God! You know what Chardonnay is good. Where is it from? Napa, um, Sonoma. Santa Barbara County. Oh Modern, my God. Uh, Sonoma, it's Naomi. It's that one. Okay. All right. This is good. So I'm all, you know, I, I don't know if you, if you saw it on my um, account a while back, but um, actually today I'm doing, uh, I usually do Wine Wednesday where I talk about wine. So on a Wednesday, right? Makes sense. But yesterday we ran, a, you know, I, I ran a little late, like a good Italian, always late. <laughs> so, so I was like, well, we have to move it to Thursday. And I was like, oh my God, Thursday. And my friend was like, oh, Taco Thursday. I'm like, no, uh -oh. Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Thursday. So here you go. And what we are actually doing, what I'm doing is I'm all tasting, lately I'm all tasting natural wines, which I'm not sure like if you, you know, if you ever do, if you're into that, but like, it's so easy to fall into that, uh, you know, familiarity of what you drink, you know, same with cooking, right? You'll, you always kind of, you know, you're, you're used to it. So you kind of do always the same stuff. And as a chef, I say, you know what, this is a good time to just expand my horizon. So uh, I, I am doing all natural wines, which is fascinating. So you, you see, it. do you see how, do you see how cloudy this is? Look at that. Yes. Yeah. So anyways, it's, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful rosé. Okay. Enough talking about wine and drinking. Clearly I love drinking. Can you tell? <laughs> ah, cheers. Um, cheers to you. Chin chin. Cheers. There you go. <laughs> chin chin. Uh, well, it's so nice to meet you. I was I mean, I have so many questions, but I know we also have to cook. I need to get my oil. It's okay. It's a, can you, I don't know how to put this, uh, this camera. Is it, is it good, guys? I don't know. Ciao, bellissima. Yes. Oh, look at that. We also have some Italians joining. Um, I know. Uh, I'm loving that. I'm absolutely loving it. Well, I hope, I hope you guys can see everything. You see half of my face, I but see, I guess. Yeah, I know. Your head, like. Uh, but you know, really, you're really, we can see all of you and what you're cooking. And you can. Okay, good. That's the important part. I mean, nobody wants to see me. They want to see what you're doing. Everybody wants to see you. No. <laughs> it's so uh, much work. <laughs> okay. Okay. Before we cook, because some yeah, I mean. people, believe it or not, don't know who you are. And, you know, just tell us about you and your show on Netflix. Say I hey. do. Sometimes I don't know who I am. I wake up in the morning. I'm like, what the heck is going on today? It's another product of COVID. It's an <laughs> or maybe, or maybe too much wine, you know, too many wine Wednesdays. One of the two. I won't tell um, everybody when you started drinking. <laughs> it's true. Um, so last fall, I, um, I was very, very fortunate to be part of this amazing uh, production called Say I Do, which is now streaming on Netflix since, uh, uh, actually it's just about a month. It was July 1st when it came out. So a little bit over a month. Um, and um, Say I Do, it's really a, a show. If you haven't watched it, you definitely should probably take a look. I would say at least watch a few episodes and see uh, how you love it. But it's, 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 it's a show about love. It's a show about weddings. It's a show about um, everything that love is, which is, you know, this, um, uh, this, this, this feeling that, that gives us security and also it gives us the strength of, uh, of, of overcoming obstacles in life, right? So fear, failures, and, you know, sometimes sickness and so forth. And so we go through eight different couples 
And not only we are giving them their wedding, you know, the wedding of their lives because they deserve it. Not only we are learning about their stories and their love stories, uh, but we are doing so in seven days. And I get this all the time from friends, from viewers, from everybody else. Um, is it true that you had seven days? And I always tell yeah. them, I say, yes, we had actually, I have to be honest with you. Sometimes we had less than seven days. We had five days. And the reality is that it's a show that it's mostly narrated from a groom perspective, which is very unusual for a wedding show. And yeah. so a lot of things I discovered, especially food and wine, I discovered only when you meet with the bride. And that happens, uh, you know, two days before, uh, two days before the wedding, right? So sorry, you went, you went a little dark here. Okay, here you go. No, oh. you're back. Uh, no, it's my fault. Um, okay. So... Uh, so it's, it's, it's really like, it, it's a beautiful show. It's fun, it's entertaining, but mostly it, I hope that the viewers will get uh, something out of it. And what is it? It's that we all should be, we all should feel more comfortable sharing our stories. We all should uh, rely on the power of love, especially now more than ever as a divided yes. you know, world and country. I think we have to go back to those very you know, same sentiments that we all share. And love is one of them. And talk about love, what a better vessel than food, right? I mean, food is, yes. to me, it's the pith of me. I'm yes. sure for you too, right? Same. So, um, so here we are. And uh, did you watch Say I Do? So to be honest, I have not yet, but I've, okay. um, I know, this is my weekend um, plan, is to binge okay. watch the whole season. The I, whole I thing? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I thought like they were gonna put out just like a few episodes at a time, but I just looked and they're all there, ready to go. So. I plan I mean, to watch the whole season this weekend. All um, right. I will, okay. I will report back. Um, I mean, Thank I have you. seen little clips and I've, you know, so I'm very excited. This is I am, right I am, I am very, uh, I'm very much looking forward to hear, uh, you know, to hear what you think. Um, especially from the food portion of it, you know, and I mean, these weddings are like 150 people's weddings. I mean, they're big weddings and, we were, I mean, I was up all night cooking, you know, with my, with my, with my staff, with my amazing team. And we were pushing out some fantastic experiences. You know, food, especially in a wedding, is just so important because it's a, it's a great way to show, uh, show the family and friends and, you know, the, the people that you care about that are there, uh, who you are as yeah. a couple, but also as a person. So you have the chance of bringing a little bit of history you know, to the, to the table. So what are the dishes that you grew up with? What makes you, uh, you know, connect from a, you know, belly level? Like what gives you comfort and kind of bring that to the menu. But also it's an amazing time to create new memories and new traditions, right? That as a couple, you will start, start, you know, that day you'll start sharing with the people you love. And so it's this, you know, yin and yang. It's like this mix of like the past, you know, having trust in what has been, but really like bet and rely on the future and kind of bring it together in a beautiful menu. And, you know, we're talking also about wines, about cocktails, about, you know, uh, uh, cocktail menus and so forth, so that the guests will leave and will remember the day, you know, for, for the rest of their lives. I mean, that's really what a wedding is, you know. It um, sounds like, I mean, yes. It sounds no? like a dream right? job, first of all. Second of all, <laughs> you have like, uh, million people on here that are just like, I can't wait till season two. They're, they're huge. Oh, thank you guys. So uh, even more, like now I'm even more excited to watch it. Um, so thank you. And I had another question. I wanted to know, do the bride and groom or groom and groom, do they have a, a, a choice in what they, what you prepare or is it all surprise? Like, do they influence your menu? Uh, so, Yes, they do influence my menu because, you know, uh, usually I would start um, designing a menu once I know a little more about, you know, who the groom's, uh, uh, groom's brides, you know, who they are, who these, you know, two people are. Um, and so throughout the show, you see me connecting with, you know, mostly the groom, right, at the beginning because the bride doesn't know. Um, and you get a little bit of feedback from that. Um, you know, but I have to, you know, give you a news here. Not many grooms know what their brides like. Okay. <laughs> I know this comes, I know this Shocker. comes as a shock. <laughs> I'm 
shocker. <laughs> I have no idea. So I remember in, uh, you know, there was one episode, uh, Maddie and Melvin. And Maddie said she's this beautiful woman and she's busy. She's, you know, in the, in the peak of her career and she's, you know, a little older and she really found love with Melvin. And Melvin is this funny guy. And when it came down to like, hey, Melvin, what do you want at your wedding? What do you think Maddie would like? He told me bologna sandwiches. Listen. I, I did not buy it whatsoever. And I was like, this is, no, she's like, no, she'll like it. I'm like, are you sure she will? Because I'm not sure. And so really the, the bulk of the menu design comes 48 hours before the wedding when I sit down with the bride and we had to do some, uh, how do you say, uh, 180 or three, what, yeah. like, a 180, <laughs> like a change, right? A change of yeah. things. Because here I am designing a menu based on the groom. And then, you know, the, the, the bride looks at me and says, not, a chance in hell that I'll eat that, you know? And, and I'm like, okay, well, then we go back on the drawing board and we kind of figure it out. But listen, the show is not about me. The show is not about also Jeremiah and Ty who are also with me on the show. The show is about the bride and the groom. So my main concern in anything I do, especially when I cook, is really how to translate the couple's story or the individual story into food. And it's my love language, you know? It's like another, it's another, you know, I speak Italian, English. It's because and, you're Italian. And, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm I, Italian too. Our whole family, it's you know, all I know. It's food you know, is all we know. It's all we know. And also, it's really where all our social occasions happen. That's the power of food and wine. It's, it's, it really, like, connects you from a, a, a primal level, you know, and it brings people together, no matter, uh, no matter your path, you know, no matter yeah. who you are, your age, your race, you know, your social status it brings people together. And one food I especially love, which by the way, we're doing today, it's street food. And yes. that to me, it's like the epitome of, uh, of bringing people together. Once you see, you know, maybe yes. you travel to Italy, maybe, but also here, you see these taco trucks and that, there, is, there, is a, there is a blue collar worker and then next to it, there is the lawyer and then next to it, there yes. is the, you know, the grandmother and then next to it, there is the young kid who, you know, is skating around. It brings people together. It doesn't matter where you're from, street food especially. And I am so happy to do this dish with you because it really resonates with me in a specific time of my life. And, and, uh, and it brings me a lot of comfort and joy, uh, especially with a beautiful glass of wine. So here you go. Yes. Okay, we're about to start. This is one of my favorite things in the whole world. If I could like have a last meal, if I was like about to leave this world, uh, this would be included. So... <laughs> I, I just, These I here. Love it so much. I'm loving so, that. I'm so glad we're doing uh. this. <laughs> I've got my. Oh my god! What I'm ready. <laughs> so okay. So hold on. All these. Do these people know? All the. All of you. By the way, thank you. I mean, look at this. It's just from all over the world. It's so beautiful. Um, yes. Do they know what we're doing? Um, so we have posted recipes. We have announced it, but let's review what we are making. It's arancini. I'm sure you say it sexier and better. Um, which is fried risotto balls. I, I, when, when I was waiting on you, I was trying to explain uh, that, you know, this is a great use for any leftover rice mm. or risotto or, you know, I mean, it can be a canvas. And then we're going to stuff it. Of course. With some mozzarella and peas, right? I love it. I love how you say stuff it. Like you were really like, we're going we're gonna to put a lot of cheese in there. <laughs> That's what we like. <laughs> You know, um, I spent a beautiful summer in Sicily, and um, <laughs> Sicily is the only place where you wake up in the morning, and at 8 a.m., your breakfast consists of uh, espresso corretto, which is basically espresso with a shot of uh, uh, Everclear, grappa. We call it grappa, but it's basically Everclear, oh, right? Yeah, oh, actually, yeah. sorry, moon, moonshine, I think, moonshine, in the States, right? right? Moonshine. So grappa is basically moonshine. But that's how you start the day. And then together with that, you do not have like, you know, bacon and eggs or, you know, like in the States or maybe a little pastry like in France. You have an arancini, which is not an arancini the size we are making today. It's an arancini, the, oh, like, a, like, that like big. the giant one where you share it. I mean, you share if you are, you know, if you're, if, you're, if there is something wrong with you, but otherwise you just eat it all, okay? But it's so good. And that comes at 8 a.m. It's unbelievable. I remember these arancini, you know, being fried in front of me and they're hot and crispy and they give it to you in this parchment paper and you just walk around with this, you know, bowl of rice with, uh, you know, stuff with whatever. 
Um, so it's, it's quite fantastic. But like you say, you, you, and by the way, you know, you have to stomp me because otherwise I talk throughout this whole thing. <laughs> you know that, right? I'm, I'm a talk, okay, I'm a well, talker. Keep talking, keep talking. Okay. But I am going to be making, uh, so use any leftover rice or right. And so for example, balls with yep. It. Yep. So last night I made a little Parmigiano risotto, right? So just simple. Uh, I finished my delay. I had a bunch of press to do, luckily, and then I went and I saw, you know, I watched the sunset with some friends on the on the sand. Um, and then I came home and it was a little late. It was like nine o'clock, and I was like, "What am I gonna eat? I don't wanna, you know, I don't really wanna clean up too much." That was my thought. I don't wanna clean up One too time. much, which I, I'm sure all of you give me a hands up if you don't wanna clean up after cooking, which I think <laughs> all of us, all of us don't. Me either. Um, so I made risotto and I made parmigiano risotto, which is so simple. It's a one pan, right? So a little base of extra virgin olive oil, good extra virgin, some butter. I usually like to mix up the two. And then you have a beautiful rice. So this is the thing about, about ancini or risotto is that, um, and the two things go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. You have the risotto the night before and then the, the after you have the arancini. Yes. You're not gonna make the arancini just to make the arancini, okay? Yes. You have to make the risotto the day before then you have leftovers. Then the day after for happy hour, you make a little orange cheese. Yeah. So just so everybody knows, okay? So I'll say, you know, I'll share with you the risotto recipe. So that, that too, you know, you can. But the base of it, a little extra virgin olive oil, butter, you put the rice, the best rice, uh, Italian, of course, you have to use an arborio, which is good. Yes. It has a lot of starch, so it brings things together. Well, look, at, look at those, those are gorgeous. Those are beautiful, those are better than mine, actually. I'm loving that. So you get this rice, a little Parmesan cheese, some lemon zest, it's fantastic. Um, and you have leftovers. So it's always better to make arancini the day after because the, yeah. the, the gluten, right, relaxes and it kind of binds everything together. So you have this leftover rice, which is this one right here. Can and, I see you know, your bowl? Can you hold that bowl up a little bit? Yeah. Is that an Italian thing? Because my grandmother um, had one that she would always serve for pasta in. Like, yeah. Of course, and it's always it's always and it looked one. Just like that. It's always one bowl. Like, you know, in my family, we had the pot. You know, we had the bowl. We had, you know, the pan. Like, yes. And it was always the same, and it was almost emotionally. It was it was like grieving. It was a grieving process. Like getting rid of that. I remember my oh, my, yeah, mom, no. my mom. My right? mom asked for it when my grandmother passed away, and it's like so it's hers, it's and then it'll be mine. <laughs> and it will be not, mine. <laughs> not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. I love it. Um, so you got the rice, and then you do exactly what you what you did. So we have to stuff it. I mean, this is a very simple recipe, but usually the bowl it's about four ounces, and you kind of put it in your hand, and then you know you stuff it with different things. So in um, in South Italy, they do it with a little uh, scamorza, which is like a smoked mozzarella, um, and a little ragu, which is a meat sauce, right? And peas. These are the three things that go in it, which are fantastic. But I did not make ragu, and I did not have time to make ragu. So you can create your own arancini. You can do whatever the heck you want. That's it. So you stuffed it with the mozzarella, which you have in your hand, right? So I'm about to put this. Put that in I, there. I should have done it before I rolled it up, but whatever. No, 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 no. It's okay. There is no right or wrong way. You just push it in there. Perfect. That's it. And then are we doing peas as well? Yes. Or and now, absolutely. I love peas. So peas is a classic. You know, everybody like forgets about it. And the reality is, I, I'm going to be honest here with you. I don't even taste the peas, but they're cute. They're it's cute. cute. Like, it's cute. Like, it's, you know, they're green. They're there. They're cute. Like, it's just, you know, people are like, oh, my God, there are peas in here. You know, it's just a classic thing. So. So your recipe just said one pea. Is that all you're putting in? Or you, put you know, I was, I was thinking of, uh, what is it? Um, Cinder no, who is it? Cinderella? The slips on, no, there is no, it's no wine. There's the lips princess and the pea. I was, yeah, the <laughs> princess and the priest. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Um, that's no, you, impressive, actually. You, you can, you, <laughs> you can put whatever you like in there. You can put more, you can put less. Well, I'm going to put like a few, just Yeah, put a few, put a few, put a few. I'm doing it too. Um, uh, yes. My mouth is already watering because y'all just don't even know. These are so good. So I want, you know, I always, I always tell, and I want to tell the viewers, it's like, uh, you know, you have the recipe, you posted the recipe, maybe you're going to print it, maybe you're going to do it. I always say, do whatever you feel like doing. You know, don't, don't try and, uh, uh, you know, follow 
distractions um, exactly to the T. Because cooking is really 10% the recipe and then 90% is really go by feelings, you know, and what kind of feels good or not. And, and um, so, you know, if you, if you want to start with something else. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, I lost. Hold on, you paused. Oh, come on, buddy. Well, we lost, Chef Gabe. Um, you got disconnected. Hold on, he'll be back, I'm sure. Isn't he a doll, y'all? Um, for those just joining, uh, we'll give Chef Gabe time to catch up. Uh, we're making fried risotto balls, so we have our risotto stuffed with some mozzarella and peas. Chef, we lost you. Um, but I will keep going for y'all because I do know how to make these. Here he comes. He's coming. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hold on. Can okay. you see me? Yeah, no, I, I can see your kitchen, but I oh. Nope, there he gets. <laughs> Listen, I'm glad it's him and not me at this point. Um, so I've got my risotto. I've stuffed it with some cheese and peas. And then you just wrap it around there and make a delicious ball. And then we're going to bread this, okay? We're just going to do like a classic like breading, a little bit of flour, egg, and breadcrumb, which I have over here. Hey, everyone. We have people from all over the world. This is amazing. Okay. Chef, come back. Come back. Everyone loves you. <laughs> this is too funny. I'm just glad it's him and not me this time. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I, just, I was glad it was you and not me that time. You know what? Was it me? I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> it was uh, me. Yeah, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay. Well, so where like, are you? He's where so did, cute. Bring I don't know this. This whole like this whole internet today. It's it's not. It's not. I don't know. Is this Saturn return or something? You know where something. there is like it's the whole thing fault. is something. It's, it's not, not. Yeah. Exactly. So okay. So where are you at? So I explained to everyone that we have stuffed. Okay. Flour, and we're going to go through the standard breading procedure. So we're going to do a little flour, yes. a little egg, and a little breadcrumbs. And then we're going to just fry these up, y'all. I'm loving that. So remember to like, remember to like, you know, if you want to put a little bit of salt and pepper in the, in the flour, you can do it in the, in, the, in the egg as well. And then as far as breadcrumbs, uh, what do you use? I love to use panko breads. Or, I got you know, panko because you said that's what I should get. And, <laughs> which is what I would like anyway, because it makes it extra crispy. Yeah, um, I do. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's also a little bit lighter. It feels like, you know, it's more like yeah. a tempura style. And that I like, you know, that's, it, it's fascinating because as I was saying before, I, um, I disappeared from this thing. But I was, I was telling how um, you, should, you should be cooking based on feeling. So what you feel, you know, you want to add certain things, do it, you know, try it. Um, and same with the panko. Usually arancini do not require panko. We do not have panko bread in a meeting. We, right. don't, we don't use it in a, in a classic uh, Italian family staple, you know, it's not a family, family staple ingredient. Uh, but it definitely comes out better. It comes out like crispier, it comes out lighter. So again, cooking is really like a mix of a lot of things. And you try different things and you see how it works. So here we are at the panko bread. And I'm going to do that with you. So I have my, you know, my little bowls because I'm getting, I'm getting hungry. I didn't even eat anything today. So this is like my first, uh, you know, my first uh, a meal. Of the, of, the, of the day. Well, but, unfortunately, I, um, fortunately, unfortunately, I had to record a video of seven ways to cook rice. So I have <laughs> eaten seven 
types of rice today? Um, that seems uh, uh, seven. That seems uh, a little, a, a little aggressive. You know what I mean? You didn't even know there were seven ways to cook rice. No, I'm thinking about it now as I'm talking to you. In fact, and I'm thinking like, okay, I think I know about three, four. You know, <laughs> but like, what are what are the other three? <laughs> when is that? Them, when is that coming out? Yeah, uh, it'll it'll be out in a couple weeks. So. Oh my god. Okay. So where where are you at? Because look, I'm I'm doing fairly well. Look up here. Okay. All right. All right. I'm right. I'm right with you. So I'm right with you. I'm in the I'm in the breadcrumbs now. Okay. I want to show you something. Do you, do you can you see what's behind me, right there? Uh, it 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 looks long and and thin. What is it? And thin? Is it is it pasta? See, what is it? I want to see if you know what it is because it's one of my other like favorite Italian things. But I'll tell you. I'll I'll get it in just a second. I'm gonna. Is it gnocchi? It's not gnocchi. It's not the thing for gnocchi. And now now I can't concentrate anymore. I'm just thinking. I'm looking at it right now. I'm just like going for <laughs> that, it. That was just a teaser. Y'all keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> keep watching tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll reveal that in a minute. So, do you cook for your family every night? I want to know. I do. Um, you do. I do. Um, until I get like like right now, I'm at the point of I'm really tired of cooking for my family. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's true. There's really, it's, you know, we're not going out to eat, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it, we have it, picked up. I mean, the, the only other thing we will do is like pick up pizza, which yeah, uh, we love. Of course. Why would, and 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 um, by the way, where, where where are you at? Right, like, what, what city? I am in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh my God. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, you have to make me some Alabama food, kind of, you know, like some staples. I would love it. Why don't you come visit us? Oh, yeah. that would make me very happy. You In know, I don't think I've ever, studio. I don't think I've ever, uh, I've ever been to um, Alabama. I would absolutely love to uh, discover that part of the country. I've been I would in the States for- love States for... Come and we have, a, um, especially in Birmingham, we have a large Italian population. Yeah. Because a lot of Italians came to New Orleans, Louisiana, uh -huh. and then we're just like four hours from there. So that's where all of my grandparents came from and through. And that's how they ended up in Birmingham. But what, what, is, uh, what is your heritage? Uh, Sicilian. My oh, my God. Look at that. I made that on China. They didn't even know that about, about that. When that is so that, perfect. Like, that's why I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving that. Okay, so I have, um, I have my arancini ready. Okay. You ready for the oil? Do, do you? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about oil here, all right? Let's all talk okay. about oil because let's oil is important. It. Oil is important. Uh, some people are asking what we're cooking. We're cooking arancini. Uh, Colombia, oh my God. Guys, I'm so sorry. This is a, a sidetrack. I shouldn't probably even say that, but Colombia, Con Honduras. I watched a show the other night on Netflix, and it's called uh, Street Food. Have you watched it? No. But oh I'll, my God, you have to love. I it's think, so beautiful. I'll just, I don't know they, if I can. I mean, like. They, they, have all, they have all this, they have all these foods from all over the world, but mostly, uh, you know, Latin, Latin America, and, you know, Brazil, uh, uh, Argentina. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And again, it speaks about the power of street food, something that, you know, food doesn't have to be so complicated. You, you know, not every night has to be a three course meal. And in fact, you know, maybe never like, you know, just enjoy for what it is. And, you know, not every evening has to be this perfect. You can make one dish and it's fine. You can make a bunch of small different ones. My, uh, my mom, um, she, she also got burned out by cooking because she would cook, you know, for a family of six every single night. And, um, and she's also a nurse, so you know she was working during the day, and now she would come home and she would cook like many, like many, you know, uh, women and mom. Uh, they are all superheroes, and I mean, I can only think, you know, how how much effort and love it takes to do all of that. But uh, usually, like once a week, or uh, you know, sometimes even twice a week, she didn't want to cook, so she would show up, you know, after work. It was seven thirty p.m., and she would have <laughs> she would have this box in the fridge that she would call it like the dinner box. And it was where all the leftovers were going. Like there would be like pieces of prosciutto, a little cheese, some bread, um, you know, maybe some leftover arancini, a uh, little tapware of pasta, uh, some pieces of porchetta from Monday, two pieces of lasagna from Tuesday. And she would keep it. it. And then she would take the box and she would plop it on the middle of the table. 
and she'll be like, here you go, dinner is ready. And we would all eat a little bit from the box and we'll finish it off, you know? It's perfect. See, that usually happens. I don't have it in a box. I just empty out all my like separate boxes, but I might um, start the box because by Thursdays, that's usually our leftover night because you know, I will have cooked Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'm sick of it. So I just pull out whatever's leftover. Mm -hmm. But my great grandmother was huge on leftovers. She, you know, we, my mom would make a good meal, like a new meal if she was over, but she wouldn't eat it. She would eat what was, she'd say, how long has this been in there? You know, she'd look at it. <laughs> and my mom would be like, oh, those have been in there, you know, those, they were like lentils or something, been in there like a week. And she's like, well, that's what I want. And I she lived to be a hundred. So I was like. See, that's it. That's a secret. My, my grandfather is uh, 100 in October. And, um, you know, every single day he has a glass of Chianti of this wine that I can't even drink because it's such a new wine. Like it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not expensive wine. It's like, the, you know, and it's so like the percentage of alcohol is outrageous in there. And he just drinks a glass of that. And then he just, you know, pieces of cheese, some prosciutto, a little bread, and then he's done for the night. Maybe, in, you know, in the evening he does a little minestrone or soup, you know, and he's, done. And he's so healthy. He's so healthy. So I think, you know, again, I think like when it comes to cooking, sorry, I keep touching the thing. I'm sorry, guys, but it, okay. my phone is like that. Um, but, you know, I think sometimes you just make things more complicated than what they are. So when you step into the kitchen, do two things. One, be okay with imperfection. Just, you know, do not be attached to the final product. And then, um, and on that note, enjoy the process more than the outcome. Does that make sense? So yes. do not be attached to the final, like, is this arancini going to, gonna be you know it's gonna taste great maybe yes maybe no but the process of it's amazing me drinking a bottle of wine me talking to you cooking looking around listening to some it's music perfect. that is what cooking is right and then um and then uh you know not making it complicated like make it easy make, you know do 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 something that speaks to your heart that makes you know makes you comfortable that feeds your soul besides your belly so it's um you know that's that's really to me that's what cooking is and you know what what it speaks to so okay I just Side love track. you. I just love you. I could listen to you talk all day. Oh my God, you're so sweet. Thank you. I don't even, I don't even, right, we're, I, I we're get tired of listening. I wanted to talk about oil though. You know yeah, I wanted to talk about oil very quickly. So oil, you have a couple of options there. Of course, you know, you can go to the store and get like the frying oil, which, you know, it always works. Um, uh, but in Italy, we really use um, olive oil for everything. And that includes... Uh, something like right. this. I mean, clearly, if I tell you, you know, do not put 10 gallons of olive oil in a fryer and fry French fries, but this is a little different, okay? This, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's elevated street food. So you want an olive oil or you want an oil that it's good. So do not use extra virgin olive oil, just use an olive oil, maybe from Italy, maybe from Spain, you know, and, and like a good, you know, a good, a good one. And then sh you can even shallow fry it. You don't even have to, you know, deep fry them completely if you want to. So you don't have to use, you know, as much oil. And also reuse the oil because if, if the oil doesn't get yeah. to the smoking point, you can reuse it, you know, later on. Absolutely. So do not yes. throw anything away. Okay. My oil is ready. Um, okay, are you going to throw it in there? there? I okay. think mine's ready. I kind of, oh, yeah. let me see. See, oh, yeah. mine. Oh, I'll show you all my. Show me yours. Yeah, because Mine actually, look at that. Mine wasn't ready. Oh my God, looks per Okay, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Can you use an air fryer? Um, you know, I never done this. I, are, you, are you up with the air fryer? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I think, I think the, I think the prime is, it's the right way of doing it. I don't think in Sicily they use air fryer. You know, let, let's just go, let's just let's go just with it. Let's just keep it authentic. Let's, let's just keep it authentic. authentic. Use the air fryer for the I chicken it'll nuggets. It would probably be okay, but. Nah. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Once in a while, we can indulge into these things, you know, it's fine. Um, Anybody has any questions, by the way, while, while you cook? Because I'm checking yeah, on you, but I'm, you. I'm looking at the question. I would prefer a fryer. Well, then try it. Try it and let us know. Uh, try it. Okay, what is Oh, my God. What? Do you know what this is? <laughs> the, uh, that is a giant squash, by the way. What is it? It's a giant <laughs> It's a... <laughs> it's a... <laughs> Look, everyone that has seen my videos knows what this is. I want to see if somebody can guess what this is before I tell Chef Gabe, who I mean, is from it Italy. Be, it, could, it could be something from like, I don't know, Child in the Chocolate Factory or like Harry Potter or what? I, I'm not sure. From Italy. What is that? This is a cacuzza. <laughs> 
somebody says that's a weapon and i agree with them <laughs> i agree that's this is a weapon. the biggest one i mean it's it's giant but these grow i guess probably in the southern part of italy okay um, so i'm i see this is it what what good oh my god people know it good goods good goods okay sorry i don't even know this cucuzza or cucuzza what what is it tell me so it's it's a squash it's an italian squash it's very okay. mild you know it's similar to like a zucchini um in taste but it's just its own thing and it's and so or may i ask and uh, maybe you'll do a video about this but like how do you prepare it oh my god um, that's perfect i do have a video mom versus cucuzza Okay. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> Mom versus cuckoos. <laughs> uh, but I will, I will oh make God. it. I'm probably going to make it tomorrow or Saturday, and I'll okay. probably post it to my stories. But I make it. You make it similar to like a stew, almost. Um, okay. You know, garlic, all, onions, tomato, in like a thin. We we do a thin sauce, and then you know you add a little pasta to it after the the squash cooks down. You have to peel it. The peel is too tough to eat. Um, so it's, how long it just just the, just the peeling process it's a workout in its own that thing is it's, just it's like really, I mean, that looks intimidating but it's really thin it's it, <laughs> it looks intimidating yes <laughs> it's yeah. okay yes um, it did it did um well yeah. i want to i want to see i'm going to look i'm going to go uh, on your profile and i'm going to look at the at the mom versus cuckoos i love it so uh, uh you know you have to i probably should have done some research before but do you uh, do you have kids I have three kids. Oh my god. Um, okay. So so you make them peeling that thing. You make them peel that thing. No, no. I, that this is like probably one of my favorite things to make. Uh and they only they're very seasonal. So Okay. Um they're only like late summer is the only time you can get it. Um at least here in Alabama. I've never been to Italy. Hopefully one day. Well, I mean, I have to be honest, I I haven't and this is actually how beautiful um Italian food is is that It's so diverse like I mean people tell me hey have you ever eaten or have you know how to cook it? and sometimes I feel like I'm like mm, uh, I you know and it's like well it's a dish from this little town that has 75 people in it and it's like my grandmother is from it and like and I say to them I'm like I'm so sorry you know like I I really but we have so many variations of everything and so many dishes you know you have to a lot of people uh, for, forget or you know they don't realize that Italy has been unified fairly recently I mean we're Oh no. Oh no. Oh. oh. Thing is just like so Italy has been unified fairly recently, but before that like the the culinary heritage was very much um uh, you know uh, tied to the little communities, the little, you know, villages, yeah. the little and some 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 stuff was like some villages some places were extremely small and that's where the you know the recipes this small little variation of recipes come from and um and then you know we try to define an italian the first person who tried to define italian cooking as it was it was uh, artruzzi which actually has a beautiful cooking book that dates back to the you know late 1800s and he tried to compile these amazing recipes from all over italy trying to define italian cooking as a national you know uh, a national uh, bubble you know of, of yeah. what to this but but it's very difficult you know it's it it, it there's it, so many yeah so many so it's it's fascinating you know for me as a chef i get inspired by always traveling back and actually go to these little places you know and 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 try their food to try you know see how they process uh, their ingredients and you know spending time with the grandmothers so spending time with the small families and see how they do things and 90% of the time they do things in a different way than i do and that's like where the inspiration comes from and then you come back here and you know you're able to translate that into a plate to create a menu yeah. you know that's why i did on the show you come back and you can apply that to uh uh you know to to um uh, to your own life so that's beautiful i thought you were showing me something oh no i thought no i thought i thought you were showing me something i thought oh, you no, were moving the camera i was trying to fix i was like i was cutting my head off too and see oh. look at q so golden brown this is it right and um and also you know these need to be enjoyed warm and um and also a little bit you know crunchy if you will so when you have when these are ready 
I always like to put them on parchment paper, or if you don't have parchment paper, you can just drop it on a plate, just on a plate like that. And I'd rather doing that, that's, per, that's, per, that's beautiful. And I'd rather doing bad. that. I think my oil was too hot for the first one, but. Um... Well, it's okay, it's okay. The first one, it's always test. The first one is always test. Can you use avocado oil? No, do not. I mean, you can, but don't. You know what I mean? Like, you can, you can but don't use avocado oil. This is like, this is an all Italian recipe. You want all Italian ingredients. Like, that's really, you know. Uh, um, oh, thank you so much. That's really kind of what you want to go. Now, I want to talk to you about how what we do with this arancini because you can, you know, you have like the beautiful bowls right here. They're done. Uh, they're fantastic. But you can eat them like this with a good bottle of wine, which is great. Or... Uh, you can also make it a, um, you can also make it like a, an antipasto, like at a table, right? You know, let's say you have a, you have a party of five or six, right? And it's always fun to kind of like, you know, put a, you know, have a bowl and then serve it with something. So what I love doing is a little tomato sauce and this tomato sauce is, you can't really see it, but, uh, hold on, let me show you. Um, let me get a spoon. Hold on. Um, okay, here you go. So. I'm listening. You have this beautiful tomato sauce that has been going. This is actually, I call it, it's a double reduced tomato sauce. So um, let, let me actually, you know what I can do? I can just turn it around. Can I turn it? Can I turn No, I cannot turn the camera around. Anyways, I'll show you like right here. So you have a little tomato sauce right here, right? And it has been uh, cooking now for about 12 hours. So what happens is that you reduce it and then you let it cool down and then you turn it on again and you reduce it again. So it's almost like a conserva, if you will. It's very, very, yeah. you know, all the water evaporates. All you, it's in there, it's the acidity of the tomatoes, the sweetness of it, and then you have a little bit of basil and garlic. It's as simple as that. But I also enjoy putting in there some anchovies. And I'm telling you the power of anchovies, man. I know that many of you won't like it. So Maybe good. I don't even like it, but I have to be honest, you add it to things, you don't even know it's in there, but it adds a umami flavor that all of you will absolutely love. Oh, you know? I wish right? I had some right now because... Oh. They are My the, mouth they are is the like, best. literally, like, I'm salivating. And um, get the good anchovies, you know, the anchovies from Italy, like, and let it dissolve in the, in the oil. And then you really kind of create a beautiful, like, umami flavor base for these arancini. So, you know, we have these, and what I kind of like to do is just to put it at the bottom of that. Um, and it kind of creates this, you know, if you will, this dipping sauce, you know, uh, that you can kind of, you know, enjoy as you, as you go through. So that's it. And then you have the arancini, and I kind of put it together. Okay, well, listen, you're not going to believe this, but what? I happened to make a little, <laughs> I just kind of had a feeling you didn't say to do that before we I met. did not say to do that. I did but not. I just, I like to dip mine in a little bit of, uh... so I'm just going to be fan. I mean, I'll put a little. That's it. Do it. Absolutely do it. Also, salt. Let's talk about salt. Perfect. Did you salt it? Um, I cheesed it. <laughs> okay. So I'll show hey, you a bit of salt right here. And so this, what the salt does is actually, um, it actually, um, you know, it absorbs the oil, right? This is, so, I don't know about you, but like this is so difficult to cook and then read at the same time. I'm usually know, cooking and talking, right? There have been so many comments. I'm so sorry, guys. People want to ask you so many questions. I hope you can see, like, it will you be know, posted. We'll post the live video, so. Okay. I think you can see people's questions. No, 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 I can. It's just that I, I mean, put I think my you can face see down and then, I, and then I miss it. So maybe we'll do like a two minutes, like fire back to back questions okay. after we're done with this, okay? Perfect. So we have the, we have the rancini, you got the salt in there. I like to just, you know, kind of put them on here. And then what I really like to do, like just like you did, is to take a beautiful Parmigiano Reggiano right here, right? Like the good stuff, guys, please. Just get the good stuff. You don't have to eat it as much, but get the good Parmigiano, the 68 months. You know, now you can find it anywhere, but the real stuff. And you just like, just like you did. You just give it like a nice little, you know, dust, right? You, you let it, you make it snow. That's it. All right, so I'm going to show you these because otherwise you can't really see it. Just like you. Uh, so right, Listen, first we have, to, we have to hold our things up together and somebody's going to take a screenshot. Oh, my God. No, I need your face. Need oh, you your need face. my face on it? Okay. Okay, so someone has taken a screenshot. Did somebody a took a screenshot? A screenshot? I'm sure okay. they did. And whoever, whoever, whoever did, can you make sure to, to make me look good in it? Okay. <laughs> I okay, think that's not okay. easy to do. Can we eat? All right. Yeah, well, of course we can. All right, so you do not eat this with fork and knives, okay? No fork and okay. knives. Hands. That's it. Hands. Hands. Okay. All right. Going in. 
Mmh. Okay. Mmh. Mmh. It's. I mean, you know. There's nothing like. You know. You know, and then and then you go back. You know, that's the beauty of it. Like you soft. buy into it, and then and then you just like kind of go back into the sauce, right? And then you kind of go. Mmm. Mm. It's so good. It's like it's the perfect. My thing is the perfect bite, and so you know, you know it's creamy and salty and crunchy and all the things. Mm. It's so. I'm good. so happy right now. Me too. Mm. I really do, but you know. Oh my god. That is. <clears throat> I shouldn't talk with my mouth full. Cool. But then I wouldn't talk at all because I eat all the time, all the damn time. So I have to do that. But um, mm. and then a step like after it is a mm. like. This is simple. You know what I mean. Like I, my my philosophy in cooking. You can also see that in the show. My philosophy in cooking is pristine ingredients and simple execution. When I sit down with the couples from Netflix and say, "Okay, well, now we have seven days. What we're gonna cook." To me, it was always going back to like, okay, how do we take this heritage of cooking of food that they they are basically sharing with me, and 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 apply my philosophy to it? And it was about finding the best ingredients, finding the best purveyors, knowing where things come from, having that connection, so that you can actually create a story behind your food. That's why I say some people get burned out about cooking, some people uh, lose their passion. Yesterday I had uh, I did a Q and A on my Instagram, and a chef asked me, "It's like, hey, I'm a chef. I lost all my passion. How do I get it back?" And I say, "You didn't lose it. It's just right there. It's dormant. You know, it's like stagnant. It's like it's not awake. But you have to wake it back up. And how I do it." It's by traveling, right? It's about like sharing uh, uh, meals with people I don't know. It's about you know going hiking with my dogs. It's about doing things that put me in contact with the the the, the wider world. That they put me in contact with experiences that I'm not familiar with, and that is what inspires me. That's when my my light bulb comes up, and I'm like, oh my god, I never thought about that. And I come back refreshed. I come back inspired. And I come back wanting to share with people. So, for all of you at home, when you get into the kitchen. You know, it's easy to go and, and always do the same things. I, I, I challenge you to maybe if you have the luxury, because in the States, unfortunately, it's a luxury, uh, to be yeah. close to a farmer's market or to actually know, you know, where your food comes from or to talk to the people who grow your food or, um, you know, the raiser your cattle. Like you go talk to them, see these things, you know, learn about it. So that when you come back into the kitchen, that zucchini you bought, you have so much respect for the zucchini. Yeah. And the person who, 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 who made it happen, that the only thing you want to do is maybe grill it and put some extra virgin olive oil and salt on it. And it just tastes the zucchini. You don't ah. have to do who knows what, you know? So going back to like that simplicity, that flavor. And this dish is exactly that. There are five things in it. That's it, right? Um, look how many so people. Good. Okay. Should we do, should All we right, do? We're do like a rapid fire. Let's go. Y'all ask, like everyone's like, who am I? You know, okay. everybody well, knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. Um, so okay. you you asked me that you picked the question and you asked me that. Okay. Okay. I will, all right. Uh, all right. Well, I'll I eat. ask Chef Gabe away. Um, ask away anything you want. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I should check one All right. Any advice on someone that wants to just start cooking? That that's not that doesn't cook, but that maybe just wants to start. Yes, I just said it. Go to the farmers market. Um, you know, or, or go and search like where the food comes from. Um, you know, maybe it takes in a different shape. Maybe it's not farmer's market. Maybe you have to do a little bit more work. Who knows? But go there, talk to the people that grow your food and tell them and ask them what is the best way to prepare it. Go home and do it. Trust okay. me. Okay. All right. What's your favorite food? Uh, pizza. Okay. Um, uh, uh, did you have a favorite couple in the show? No. Did you have a favorite wedding? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that was it was question. it was Bruce and Essie, um, and not only was it a very magical wedding, the uh, the couple uh, the, the the couple was just amazing. There are two so like they're so deserving. Um, and they love each other so much. But 
they're farmers and they live on this beautiful farm on this land and they really have the connection again we're talking about it. they have the connection of food and what and so when it came down to do the, the the menu bruce told me he says hey for me it's really important the connection to food so i want to go with you to the farm i want to go to the person that raised the pigs that raised the cattle and i want to meet these animals that we're going to pay respect to we're going to pray for and then we're going to cook them and enjoy them and make sure that nothing goes to waste. At the end of the meal, we passed out. You don't see that on the show, but we passed around uh, to go to uh, to go boxes, right? And people that put the food and nothing was wasted. Nothing of the animal was wasted. And that to me is beautiful. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, your, because you have mentioned wine. Uh, what is your favorite wine? My favorite wine. Uh, my favorite wine is... Um, um, it's a wine that I grew up with, which is a Sangiovese. Oh, uh, 100% Sangiovese. It's the expression of the grape. There is absolutely no melange, which means no mix. You know, it's not blend. It's just straight up Sangiovese from Tuscany. That's beautiful. Okay. Um, what, uh, um, let's see. Do you like tamales? Oh my God, I love tamales. I think I, have, I think I have some tamales in the freezer actually right now from a beautiful lady that comes here every Wednesday and she yells out the window, tamales, tamales, and she makes tamales around. She's a staple of the Venice community. I live in Venice, um, Los Angeles, and I love it. And so you know what I do? You, you won't believe this. I'm gonna tip it next time. Um, I live on the third floor and I have a basket like my grandmother would do. And I put oh. the money in the basket, and then I, with, a, with a cable, it goes down, and she puts the tamales in it, she takes the money, and then I put the tamale up. I'm loving that. Uh, my, my, that's the kind of stuff I would do, like, if, if I that's love the it. kind of place I would live if I didn't have, like, three kids and a husband and all the things. You so. know what? The time will come when, you, when, when you're going to do it, you know? There is... <laughs> yeah, when they go off. <laughs> yeah, when, when, it's, when you're on empty nester, you know, you just leave. <laughs> uh, would you like to compete on Iron Chef on the Food mm. Network? You know what? Competitions are not for me. Like I just don't. I'm I'm not the kind of guy that um, that likes to compete. To me, that's very ego driven, and I don't do well with it. Um, and also, it kind of takes away the whole idea of what food is. You know, like doing competitions like that. It's amazing if you're able to do them. It's amazing. The chefs that are on it are fantastic. Um, but to me, it's not an ex expression of the food, it's an expression of the chef, and it's like how good the chef is. And I don't want that to be it. I want people to remember what they eat, not because I cook it, but because of what it is, you know? And that, so that's, that's, that's the answer to that. That's a good, that's, I love that. Um, Thank you. I would like to know, this is my question, what were you doing before the call to be on the show? So, God, y'all, look at his. It's like, they're so... I can't stop eating. Perfect. They're so perfect. What? I think I made mine a little too big. No, you didn't, did you? I well, because, you know, we didn't talk about... We didn't talk about that, but uh, it's also all about the ratio of rice and worry, the filling. Don't the whole thing. I ate you the whole thing. Had... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I moved to the States 15 years ago, and when I came here, I was missing one... Thing. Well, I was missing a lot of things, but one especially. And it was the connection that people, you know, have in Italy uh, with food and the social occasion of it. So I was craving the Sunday dinners with my friends and family. I was craving the time that we would spend at the table, you know, three, four or five hours, you know, without looking at our phones and opening bottles of wine, laughing, playing cards, going back to the limoncello, all of that stuff that we all love, right? Um, that, is, uh, that is what I was missing. And so at that point, I said, okay, well, it's not out here, so I'm going to create it. And Il Toco Food was born, which is, you know, a culinary experience company, which is my company. Uh, now it's called Gabriel Bertaccini's Experiences, but it's the same. So we do, exp we create dinner parties. I, I throw dinner parties for a living. That's all I do. So you hire us to do the whole thing. We do the table, the, 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 cook the cocktail menu, the food, and then we show up and we create an amazing, memorable event for you, whether that's uh, you know, whether that's a birthday party or a wedding or, um, you know, just a, a company party, whatever that is, but always keeping the. Okay, sorry. Uh, always keeping the underlining of, I don't know, today with the, electric, with the electronics is not. But uh, always keeping the underlying of, of what food is, which is, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the glue that brings people together. And that's what I used to do. And that's what I, that's what, you know, I still do. Uh, and I'm very, very blessed. I mean, listen, again, 
I eat, I drink, and I throw parties for a living. So I'm Gosh, I'm good. your life is so I'm amazing. good. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing because my clients and my friends are amazing. And that's what I keep telling them. They always say, like, oh, thank you so much. You know, this was great. And I say, we are Oli. I am Oli. As good as the people I surround myself with. And I hope that everyone here watching, you know, it, it, it kind of, um, it, follow, it, it follows that idea of be careful who you surround yourself with and be, be also be careful who you work with. It's the same. I am, yeah. I am in to build relationships. I'm not in to make the check at the end of the month. And so I rather waiting for the right moment than actually have, you know, people around me that do not share my same philosophy. And not everybody has to, not everybody, you know, right. clearly not, not everybody does. But, um, but for me, that's what I mean. And so, um, well, I love you know, that. really, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an, what, why do it's an expression favorite. of the people. It's like, like, that's my favorite quote in the whole world. My mom gave me a little picture that said it when I was like graduating culinary school. And it just says, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I just think that's, I mean, you're it's like, living, you know, it's a dream job. You should, you should be doing what you love. I yeah. agree hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent. That's all bit. You know what? Somebody's just saying, talking about getting all together. It says that's all being ruined by, by COVID. And I want to, I want to just spend like two minutes on this, actually not even less, 30 seconds. We are in our industry. We are, uh, I probably should let you go, but we are, um, <laughs> we, are experience, we are experiencing uh, 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 a change like we've never seen before. This is a whole new wave of dining and food and what food represents. And I think we are slowly going back to what really food is meant to be, which is comfort. Food is supposed to comfort people. Food is supposed to be a vessel of love. Food is supposed to bring peace and bring people together. And, and sometimes that does not, uh, you know, does not, uh, uh, oftentimes actually, let's say that, it's connected to a more simple way of cooking, to a more unique and authentic simple way of cooking and eating. So I think if there is something that this COVID is doing, that this world is going through, it's giving us the opportunity to go back to the things that really matter, whether that is personal, whether that's professional, whether that's, you know, whatever that is. And for me in the kitchen, I see it happening. We are eating arancini. It couldn't be any more street food, cheap, you know, food, right? But it fits my soul. It makes me so happy. And that's what you should be doing, you know? So let's actually embrace that and, and use it as an opportunity, as a spring as a springboard to actually, you know, do better and create and, and go back to the real uh, uh, meaning of food. And I think that's, that's probably where we want to focus on, you know? Yeah. And like people like me, I mean, I know that I've heard a lot of fellow moms even say like, oh, I just wish like things would slow down and like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, we were given this opportunity to slow down, you know, at the cost, at an unfortunate cost. Of course, of course, but, of course. But, you know, I, I pray for that, you know, like I pray mm -hmm. for like, let's just, uh, I need to, I need life to slow down or I'm going to go crazy. And it yep. did. And I was forced to yep. you know, enjoy my family again. Yep. That I, have to to do. <laughs> sure. I was forced to enjoy my family. Thank God you were, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it, I, I share exactly the same sentiment, exactly the same sentiment. I just love it. I just love it. Oh. Uh, there have been just, I hope that you can read all these comments after this because I hope we, so. We I mean, will save the video and post it. But y'all, if y'all are watching, well, first of all, you follow Chef Gabe here. His oh. name should be in one of the corners on this video. So just click you know, his name and follow. You know, this is my first, my first like uh, double, how do you call it? The live. Instagram live? No, live. it's the double, like, is it, you know, with two people. Ah, well, the, good. The first one, you pop my cherry. I never done it before. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is. And. It. Your kakutsa cherry, because get ready. Uh, you know, I want to be part of that. You're, you're, you will love it. I'm sure if you put the, uh, the whatever SOS out for one in your town, you'll have one in like a second. If an Italian okay. grows them, like, you know, you just, I just, you have to know somebody to get them. And yeah. you just do. But when you do, you're going to like, it's, you know, a lot of the, the things that my grandmother taught me to cook and stuff was it's like peasant food. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. that yeah. it's, it's, it's nothing. It, you know, this yeah. whole pot will cost less than $5 to make, That's but it. It, it's amazing. So mm -hmm. I'm loving that. Uh, yeah. You made a lot of people laugh. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, no. it, 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 take, it takes a lot for a chef to, uh, to not swear throughout anything that we say because <laughs> chefs are not, chefs are like sailor, you know, like we, 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 we go for it. We talk a certain way. We have our own little things that we tell each other. Most importantly, we never get offended. We, we don't take it personal and we, we are very, so it take, it's taken me since the show came out. And I do these interviews back and forth on different, you know, it, it's taking me a lot of self restraint, you know, not to be, not to use certain words. Yeah. Um, and so once in a while, it's fine. You know, I have two glasses of wine and then I kind of let go, which is kind of fun. <laughs> but you know, but I, I can do it with you. I can do it with you. I'm such a fan, such a fan. Okay, second of all, if y'all follow him, you go and binge watch uh, Say I Do with Please. me this weekend. Um, and I want to, and I want to know, Netflix. and actually I want to see, like, please, if you are making these arancini, we want you to tag us. Yes. I think, I think we really do. We want to, we want to see these things. We want to see how food is, um, you know, is at the center of your life and how you take a moment for you and go back into the kitchen and really enjoy the process of it. So, um, you know, show us. I just love it. I love it. I think you're the greatest. Uh, I wish you the best. Thank you thank so much you. for joining me. This was such a treat. Um, oh, it was my treat. Thank you so much. And thank so, you for, you know, this is, this was my first meal of the day. It's, it's four, it's four fifteen PM here. And this is my first meal of the day. So thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> and now I guess I'll go, I'm going to finish cooking the rest of these and feed my family. So Please, I kick I them out it. of the house when I do these things, but I guess I'll let them. <laughs> I, I uh, hope you have a couple of, uh, of arancini for them. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, oh, I will. <laughs> Thank you so more. much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I appreciate I'll it. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.